Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman Story 6 from 1940, so let's get started. Task of creating. 
creating for myself the position I rightfully deserve. Emperor of the world. And now I must go. Put that machine down. Put it down, I tell you. Michael, stop him. <laughs> uh, no, no living thing can stop me now. Goodbye, Doctor. Don't let him get away. Michael. Doctor, what's happened? Oh, catch him, Michael, catch him. Doctor, what's the matter? You're pale. He got away with the atomic beam, Michael. Do you know what this means? That lunatic, he has in his hands the power of life and death. He is a walking symbol of death. Where is Clark Kent? When did he get back to the men? Here I am, Mr. White. Oh, Kent, Kent, where have you been? Down in the cellar helping the police. Turn up anything? Any sign of a bomb? Not a thing, Mr. White. We combed the building from top to bottom. Anything turn up here? Not so far. What's the time? It's four o'clock. If that fellow really meant business, we've only got about two hours to go. Call in your office, Mrs. White. Oh, thanks, Lois. Oh, by the way, Kent, I don't think you know Miss Lane. Lois, this is Clark Kent. Oh, how do you yeah, do? You wait here till I get back, Kent. I won't be in a minute. Well, the boy wonder, huh? Why, Miss Lane, what do you mean? They tell me you talked yourself into a job, went out west, and came back with the biggest story of the month, all in less than a week. Well, I guess I was pretty lucky. <laughs> I'll say you were lucky. Now you're the white-haired boy, eh? I'm afraid I don't quite understand. You got the old man hypnotized. He thinks you're Horace Greeley. I'm afraid I don't... Oh, don't act so dumb. All this nonsense about a time bomb in the cellar. What's the big idea? Miss Lane, I only wish I knew. You mean to tell me you didn't make it up out of your head? I certainly did not. I don't believe it. Well, now what's the matter? This... Don't you hear something? I hear the presses in the basement. No, no, outside. Pardon me a minute. Come to the window. Now, don't you hear anything? What do you think you hear? A plane. There's a plane out there flying low. Well, I'll be... <laughs> now look, Mr. Kent, this is a big town. You'll find quite a few planes flying around here all day and all night. If it bothers you, you better go back to the farm. Oh, no, really? I, I yes, mean really, it. I mean it, too. Tell the old man about your big discovery. Here he comes now. Well, well, anything new? Yes, you're a star reporter. Heard a plane. It was flying pretty low, Mr. White. Well, what of it? Oh, I've got a job for you, Lois. Yeah, a good job? No. Go out and interview a scientist. Human interest stuff. Who is he and where? Dr. Sven Baldwin. Got his own laboratory out on Haven Avenue. Look the number up in the book. Who is he, Mr. White? Oh, what's on his mind? Leading American investigator in the field of atomic energy. Must we cheat? Yeah, come on. Get going, Lois. Get going. This paper's always been tied in with science. We've been after Dalton for a long time, and now he comes to us. Why? Well, he said somebody stole a new machine he invented. I couldn't make much sense out of it, but he seemed pretty worried. He wanted me to rush a story into print. Oh, what's the matter with the police? I suggested that, but he said he needed more than the police. Sounds cracked, but it may make a yarn. Oh, on your way, Carly. Yeah. All right, if you say so, Mr. White. I'll get right out there. So long, Mr. Star Reporter. You come with me, Kent, into the office. I can't stand much more of this. I know, Mr. White. It's nerve-wracking, this yellow mask business. Uh, worse than that, I don't know whether to believe it or not. If we could only get a lead... Ordinarily, I wouldn't give it a second thought. Just another crank. But I don't know, Kent. I swear I don't know. How much the time now? Well, five after four. Don't keep thinking about the time, Mr. White. Confound it. What else can I think of? Two hours more, and we may get blown to glory. What do you think? About the yellow mask? Can he do what he says? Let's hope he can't, Mr. White. Uh, but you were afraid he can. And the devil of it is, so am I. Well, it hadn't been for that business out west. Well, maybe you ought to empty the building. No, no. You want us to be the laughing stock of the city? Suppose nothing happens. On the other hand, suppose something does. Well, they can't intimidate me. If the yellow mask means business, he'll find us right here at 6 o'clock. City Room, White. Mr. White, this is Dr. Dahlgren. Yes, yes, Dr. Dahlgren. One of our best people is on the way to your laboratory right this minute. No, 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 that is not why I call. I wanted to tell you... Yes, yes? The man who stole my atomic beam machine mentioned the newspaper. He said... He said... Yes, what did he say? Something about destroying a newspaper. What's that again? Listen, doctor, doctor. Hello, 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 Dahlgren. Hello, hello. Yes, Mr. White. I was cut off. Get me Dr. Dahlgren at his laboratory. Wait. Sorry, Mr. White. We were cut off. No, he was cut off. I'm sure of it. You heard all that? Mr. White, that scientist, what was he working on? Oh, I don't know. Some kind of a gadget to release atomic force. A machine? I imagine so. Why? Don't you see, Mr. White? There's our lead. The man who broke in and robbed him was the yellow mask. Kent, I think you're right. Dalton 
just said the burglar mentioned destroying a newspaper. I must be right. Now look here. We've searched the building and haven't found a thing. No packages, no wires. If the Daily Planet is going to be blown up, it's got to be done outside. Maybe up above. That airplane. Airplane? Was flying too low for a transport. Mr. White, that plane was spying out the lay of the land. And at six o'clock with Dr. Dahlgren's machine, they'll come back again and... Hello, Dahlgren? I'm sorry, Mr. White. Dr. Dahlgren's telephone is out of order. Yep, you hear that? Dahlgren's line is dead. Cut. That settles it, Chief. I'll be seeing you later. Ken, Ken, where are you going? After Miss Lane. Something's wrong at Dahlgren's. If it's the mask, well, there's not much time to stop him. So long. Hey, kid, where's your hurry? Yeah, got another front page scoop, Ken? Oh, thank heaven. The locker room's empty. Quickly now. Out of these clothes. It's Superman's turn now. Oh, someone's coming. The window. Out. And up. Up. Not much time left. Got to find Miss Lane. Find out what's happened to Dalgrens and stop the yellow mask. Higher we go. Higher. And faster. 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 Deadly peril hangs over the offices of the Daily Planet. Already the yellow mask is in possession of a mighty and terrible weapon. Time is growing short. But Superman is on the way. Powerful forms streaking through the night sky, red cape whistling in the wind. Can he arrive in time? And what new unforeseen danger is already creeping in on the laboratory of Dr. Dahlgren, with Lois Lane about to enter, all unknowing? Tune in next time and follow the story. Remember, be with us again for the next startling transcribed installment of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. So that was Superman Story 6 from 1940. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.